Warning, this video contains some actions that may not be safe. Please be cautious and we claim no responsibility for any injuries obtained from building this device. So hey guys, in this video we are going to be unboxing and reviewing the Central Machinery 4x36 inch belt and disc sander. This belt sander is the cheapest one I could find that's actually decent size. So we're going to play the unboxing in insanely fast motion. So this is what came out of the package. It looks like we have, of course, the main belt sander assembly here. That includes our 3 quarters horsepower motor and an 80 grit sandy belt as promised. And instruction manual is also included. of little protractor thingy. There is also kind of like a little bed for the disc sander so you can rest the thing you're sanding on. Some metal plate to mount your disc sanding disc on. Including an 80 grit sanding disc. A rear plastic plate for the disc sander. Four little rubber feet. A front plate and sawdust collector for the disc sander. And a fence for the back of the belt sander so stuff doesn't slide off. So I'm just going to follow the instruction manual and assemble this thing. So for the first step, it says that we're going to want to install our rubber feet. So I'm going to do that. For the next step, it says to install the plastic guard for the disc sander, and so here it is, and it actually goes on the front just like this, where the three screws are located, one, two, three. So I'm going to unscrew those, and then take this and screw it on, and what it looks like from the photos is that these four screws are at the bottom, so it's going to go on like this. got that plastic plate on it says that we should take the metal plate which is the plate that will actually be mounting the sanding disc onto and that this axle here should have a small notch in it and this has a set screw on it if you can see right there and that set screw is supposed to align and be tightened right over that notch so it'll lock in place but to do this because we have our covering on if you'll notice there's actually a small slot up here so just align it up with this top hole Now that we have that mounted, it looks like it's time to install our sanding disc here. So for this, it just has an adhesive backing, what it looks like, and I'm just going to peel that off. Then I'm going to try to align it as best I can on this metal plate here and stick it on. Now that we got that done, we can take our little bottom plate thing and that will be attaching here. And as you can see here, it looks like it has a little attachment to collect sawdust from a hose. The belt sander also has one of these. And because of this, I'm gonna 3D print a little attachment and combined with some nice flexible hosing, I'm gonna make a giant jack on the back so you can attach a shop vac, which would be really nice. For this, you just have four screws, one, two, three, four, that you have to unscrew. And once those are unscrewed, this thing can just go over it and it should slide in right into these small notches here, and then those four screws can be screwed back on again. Then this thing should slide right on. Now we can take our four screws and screw them back in. There we go, now that we're done with that, we can move on to mounting our plate here. But before you mount your plate, what you're gonna wanna do is double check that this little pointer arrow thing points towards the zero degree mark on this angling part here because when you attach this you don't want it to be at a weird angle because it won't fit. If it isn't already at the right angle, the angle can be easily adjusted by just loosening this knob here and then sliding it. Just like that. Now that you have this at the right angle, it's time to attach it. To attach your metal plate, you're simply going to want to take this D-axle and slide it through this hole here. Don't go all the way. We're going to want to adjust it so that the plate is spaced away from the sanding disc here because you do not want it to be ground down. Now that we have our D-axle in place, we can take the wrench that they sent us here and use it to tighten this bolt, which will lock it in place. There we go. Now that we have that done, we can move on to attaching that protractor thingy, 
which is actually called a miter gauge. I think that's how you pronounce it. For this, the miter gauge, which is this thingy, seems to just slide in right there. Just like that. As far as I can tell from the instructions, it doesn't look like it locks anywhere, which is kind of a downer, but I guess it's helpful because you can slide it all the way, but I still wish it had locked. So now that we have that installed, we can move on to installing the fence for the belt sander. So the fence is going to be mounted kind of like this, where this slit here will screw into this large nut, and these two screws will screw through this plastic guard. But as you can see, you can't screw this on with the plastic guard here. So to attach this, we are going to have to remove the plastic guard. And to do that, we're going to have to loosen two screws, which will allow you to pivot the belt just like this. If they are not already loose from shipment, the two screws that you will need to loosen are this one and the one right down here. And this is right behind the sanding disc. So what you're going to do is just take your wrench and loosen them if necessary. And now that you have that done, you'll notice that you can just freely rotate your belt here. So what we're going to want to do is now that those bolts are loose, we're going to want to rotate our belt to the uppermost position and then we can access the screws located on the back of this plastic guard here. So as you can see on the underside of our belt sander we have a hose which you can connect something to to suck up sawdust and metal scraps. There are one, two, three, and four screws. The fourth screw is kind of hidden though under there and these are the screws that we will be loosening to remove this plating so we can attach the fence. So I'm just going to quickly do that. take our belt and flip it into its downright position and then this plastic cover should just come right off. There we go, now that we have this cover removed, what you can do is take your cover and the side with the two screw mount will be on the opposite side of where the fence will be facing. So the two screw mounts over here, this side of the fence is going to be on the other side just like that and what you're going to do is just loosen the screws on the fence and then screw them right in. Make sure that these are nice and tight because this is gonna vibrate a lot and you do not want these coming loose. There we go, just like that. Before you install your plastic cover again, what you're gonna wanna do is actually just take your fingers and just loosen this little bolt here. Then just set this thing aside and then now you can work on installing your plastic cover. Just that bolt gets in the way a little bit. So make sure all the screw holes line up and everything. then you can take your four screws and screw them back in again. If you'll notice though, two of your screws are slightly longer than the other ones and the slightly longer screws are going to go in under the belt sander here. There we go, just like that. Now you can move your belt sander back to its original position. So that giant bolt that you just set aside, you're gonna to wanna to take that back and screw it in. Once you've got it sort of tight with your hands, you can use your wrench to tighten it even further. There we go, now that we have it assembled, all we have to do is turn it on. But before we do this, please put on a pair of safety glasses. Nobody wants you to lose your eyes. And make sure when using sanding tools and or grinding tools, never to wear gloves because if they get sucked under there, your hand will probably go with it. To power on the belt sander, what you're gonna wanna do is this safety switch here, make sure the yellow thing's pressed in because if it's out or partially out. You can see the switch is disengaged, but as soon as you push it in, it powers on. So when you power up the belt sander for the first time, it is more likely than not that your belt will start drifting in one direction. For me, it started drifting this way, and that is why they have this knob here. If you turn this knob clockwise or counterclockwise, what it'll do is it'll adjust the tensions here and there. Move the belt by hand and then see if you can get it centered as much as possible with this, and then finally you'll be able to click it on and it won't drift. So my first time using this, sawdust just went everywhere, it like completely filled the air in a cloud. This was really toxic, I ended up having to put on a gas mask and some serious safety goggles to actually use this thing, which really sucks. So basically, I was forced to create this little red thing here, and what this little red thing does is basically it attaches to the vacuum attached right here and also connects to this half inch internal diameter plastic tube that I purchased at Tap Plastics which attaches to the side with the disc sander and what it does is allows you to attach a shop vac here so it sucks up all the sawdust and upon attaching this thing 
it actually worked very, very, very well. So this thing was 3D printed, and if you don't happen to have a 3D printer, we will be listing these on eBay. So once again, this thing is not necessary, but we strongly suggest you get it, because otherwise this thing is just super messy, and you definitely want to do it outside. Okay, so the first step to attaching our bright red sawdust collector is to take the cordless Dremel-like tool that you saw over there. I would strongly suggest getting one of these. They're like 20 bucks, I think, online. They're really great and it comes with a battery and a few bits, but the point is you're going to take a very small sandy bit and your tubing, which should be approximately 9 inches in length, it can be a little bit shorter or a little bit longer, and on one end, jam your Dremel tool here inside and pretty much sand down the inside of the tubing a little bit because when it attaches on the sawdust collector on the disc sander, that thing that it will connect to is actually a little bit larger, so if you sand it down it will fit perfectly. There we go, just like that. Now we can take our tube and tap that out. And clean that out. There we go, now we can work on installing our bright red sawdust collector. Okay, now that we have our tube sanded down, it's time to take our bright red sawdust collector attachment and the non-sanded end of our tube. And the non-sanded end of our tube is going to slide on to the bent part of our collector. There we go. And you'll notice because the tube was stored, kind of rolled up, it's going to tend to bend in one direction. Make sure that bend goes away from your collector here because this will help in the installation. Okay, so to install your red attachment here, what you're going to want to do is take your tubing here and just slip that underneath here. And then this whole assembly should just slide in. So once you slide it in, you should be able to just bring it up and you might want to bring down your belt a little bit and slide it up just like that and that should cleanly slide into place and it should be a nice snug fit and this is where your shop vac is going to attach now you can take your tube with the sanded end here and that should be able to slide nicely on to this plastic piece right under here which is the sawdust collector for your disc sander It's okay if it looks a little bit pinched down here. No big chunks are gonna be flowing through this, so if there's a little bit of a pinch, that's fine. And there we go. Now we have our sawdust collector installed, and it's time to test this thing out. Okay, so for the first test, I'm gonna be grinding down some two by one inch wood. I think it's just a really soft pine, and I'm not going to be attaching the shop bag just to show you guys how much sawdust is kicked up by this thing. It's really crazy. For all the following tests, please wear safety glasses. Really, safety glasses at a minimum. As you can see there, that was producing a lot of sawdust. I had to hold my breath and eventually turn the thing off. The disc sander in particular was shooting a lot of sawdust up here and it was kind of going everywhere. That was a test without the shop vac and our next test is going to be with the same wood, just with the shop vac powered on.